Hello, uh, my name is Ben. Um, this is VR development in 30 minutes or less, or how to cheat at being a game developer. Um, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes. The actual development part will take less than 10 minutes. Um, and then there'll be questions at the end. Please feel free to raise your hands and ask anything you want. Uh, so, before we start, is there anyone here who'd like to follow along? Yeah, half raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, cool. No, thank you. One person, no worries. Uh, anyone? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That works fine. Um, anyone watching this at home on YouTube, um, there's a few prerequisites I'd recommend. Most importantly, Unity 3D, latest version. Uh, any 3D asset to follow along. There's a guy called Kenny um, who gives away loads of cool stuff for free. Uh, and any music track in MP3, OG or WAV format would also be handy. So about this tutorial, it's very quick and dirty. I mean, very quick. Um, it assumes you know nothing about Unity 3D or game development. Yes? <laughs> Perfect. Guilty. <laughs> I'm not going to teach anything about code or C Sharp. Perfect. This is no indication of best practice, so do as I say, not what I do. <laughs> okay? Um, what I'm trying to do here is break down um, how easy it is to make virtual reality. I mean, this isn't production ready stuff, but you can make an application, you can make something that's cool and it's engaging and it works. Um, and it will be very easy to customize this to whatever you want to do after this session. We're going to make a music video a very simple music video, but we are going to make a music video, okay? So, uh, my company's Bookie. And I say company, it's me. Um, I've been really lucky to have worked for um, some big clients. I uh, worked on the Gorillaz music video, uh, Spirit House, which was awesome. Um, I worked on a game called Song of the Sea for Oculus Story Studios. Um, I did a wildlife documentary that's showing at Tribeca Film Festival in April uh, called My Africa. Uh, I currently work for Digitas down the road um, as a Unity developer. Uh, I got into game development not through the usual paths. I didn't do computer science. I was terrible. I am terrible at maths. Um, I went to art school um, and I was totally terrified by the idea of writing anything uh, to do with computer programming. Uh, my first introduction to code was in school. It was with uh, a language called Turbo Pascal. Anyone in here old enough to remember Turbo Pascal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I had the typical kind of bad experience at school that my teacher wasn't very engaged with their job so I wasn't very engaged with what they were teaching and my whole introduction to the world of computer programming was crap, it turned me off. I was terrified of it because I couldn't find a way to, um, to, to get involved in what I was doing. I wanted to do creative stuff and they wanted to teach me how to build a calculator or a calendar or, you know, just, just stuff that a kid doesn't really want to do. So I ended up going to art school instead of, you know, doing the computer science thing. And uh, I went 
to university, I learned the Adobe suite, they taught me some 3D Studio Max. Uh, I was lucky enough that one of my lecturers is really into ZBrush, which is a 3D sculpting program. So I got the benefit of learning a lot of the artist tools for video game stuff, but still I wasn't learning how to make this stuff myself. Then I discovered Max MSP. Um, this is a really, it was a really gentle introduction back into thinking like a programmer because instead of writing lines of code and blocking it out and having to debug stuff, instead you've got this. And that's kind of like Lego, right? So you've got all these blocks and you link stuff together and you work out the logic in blocks and if it doesn't work, you restructure these little kind of noodles and eventually you end up with uh, an effects machine or you add jitter into the equation and then you can manipulate video or 3D objects. Uh, there's a band called Orteca on Warp Records, they use Max MSP and uh, there's a free version as well, I can't remember uh, what Max came from, but, but basically it's really, if you're intimidated by code, this stuff makes a lot more sense. So I messed about with this for a few years and then I found processing. Anyone in here? I can see some smiles, yes, yeah, half, yeah. So processing um, was a project at MIT and what they wanted to do was make artists more engaged with computer programming. So they took Java and they stripped it down and they made it really easy for people like me to do this. So it's just object oriented programming, which is what all of this stuff runs on, um, but really simple, really easy to get into, and there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube, which is very important. Uh, so I messed about with that for a few years, and then I found this. I cannot emphasize how important Unity is to uh, the community at large, not just for making video games, but for artists, because Unity, um, it's not only well documented and there's uh, lots of great tutorials out there on YouTube that make it easy for people to get into, but it's almost like playing with Lego. So you can take some 3D assets, you can take some audio, you can put them together, you can make a video game, right? And then I saw this. <laughs> and then um, I, it took me a long time to kind of get back into learning how to code because C Sharp is it's not too dissimilar from processing from Java, but it is a different beast and there are rules and you can't break a lot of them, even though you can write a bunch of stupid stuff in Unity and hit play and you'll get 50 errors and it'll still run somehow. Um, it's still terrifying, right? How many people in this room can write software? Yeah, almost half the room. How many people in this room would like to make a video game or a music video or some kind of interactive media? Almost everyone, pretty much everyone, cool. And that's the other great thing about Unity because if you can't do this then you have tools like this. And these will soon be integrated right into Unity, I'd be very surprised if they don't buy these guys out very soon because it takes it back to the Max MSP style of programming, <laughs> where instead of having to sit down and write stuff, you can actually take logic blocks, link them together, and you've got something that works. So on top of Unity, which is totally free to download, open up, use, you've got tools like Visual Studio Community, which you can download for free if you do fancy writing code the hard way, that's a fantastic tool and it's free to download. You've got Blender where you can make 3D models totally free, you know, open source, easy to use. 
Creator, GIMP, there's tons of other open source tools on the market now that just weren't there when I was a kid. And if you've got the time and energy to spare, you can be a game developer. It's pretty much that easy. So without further ado, uh, let's make a video game now. Yeah? Are there many people in the room that actually use Unity? Anyone? No? Fantastic. Cool. OK. So starting from scratch, you've got the empty editor window. And this is uh, Unity in a nutshell. You've got your objects and scenes down the left here. You've got the inspector here. Anything you click on in uh, the left panel here, it'll show you the uh, attributes of whatever the object is. Down here, you've got the console. We can kind of ignore that for now. You've got the project window. Uh, this is important because this is like the toy chest where you're going to store all of your bits inside the game engine, yep. And you've got the timeline. This isn't here uh, by default, um, but you can access it by going to window and clicking on timeline. If you don't want to follow along straight away, just like you. No worries, give me a shout after, we can go through it in five minutes. It's, it's not too hard. So, really quickly, let's go to game object, 3D object, and we'll make a plane, okay? And this is gonna be the ground. And we're going to enlarge it a little. Like that. We're going to project. Yeah. Just for argument's sake, that material wasn't there already. <laughs> and that folder isn't there already. We'll right click, create folder and we'll call it materials. We'll double click in there, create material and we'll call that green. Up here you've got the color picker and we'll pick out a nice shade of grass, left click Drag, bang, greenfield, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is make a really cheap, low poly uh, nature scene, like a forest. And like I mentioned at the start, there's a bunch of free assets out there, um, but there's a guy called Kenny.nl. Um, he makes an absolute crazy amount of free assets that you can grab for free. Follow him on Twitter um, or subscribe to his patron. Um, he's fantastic. Uh, let's grab the nature pack. Go to our downloads, unzip, and then create a folder, call it 
models. Grab, drag and drop. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Cool. Um, here's where you dress your set. If you've got characters, if you've got 3D models, whatever, it's as simple as picking them out. Uh, feel like Bob Ross, I need a happy little tree. <laughs> There's my happy little tree. Palm tree, why not? Drag, drop, there it is in your scene. Yep. And it is just like playing with Lego. Um, create your own assets, go into Blender, go into ZBrush, Sculptress, totally free. Um, this stuff isn't too hard to pick up with a couple of YouTube videos and you import it into Unity and just start dressing your set. So drop, drop, drop. And you get the idea. You can hit E, rotate things around, shortcut R, where you can scale things up and down, hit W, move stuff around. And basically, um, what I want to do here is just, when I did the uh, Gorillas video, that was built in Maya but the previs was all done in Unity because it's a game engine, it's a lot faster to drop things in and out, um, stick audio in there and get things moving and tweak them around really fast. So going on the same principle here, if you wanted to just make like a little kind of stage where you could sit in the middle and have all this stuff going on around you while music played out and things got animated. Really simple to do that, really quick. Um, let's make a empty object and we'll call that controller. Go into timeline, hit create. And there's your timeline. If we grab some audio, save it into the audio folder in our assets library, right click in the timeline get an audio track, and then in this little drop down here, add from audio clip, and there's your waveform. Really, really simple, really important, and this makes doing the music video thing so, so much easier than it was a couple of years ago when you either had to write your own uh, script, uh, especially in order to see the waveform. Um, this, this stuff uh, wasn't there a while ago. And I'll show you why it's so important now, because we can grab an object. Drag it down here. Create an animation track. Hit record. And then looking at the waveform where you've got either drums or a beat or whatever happening. While it's recording, move it down, move it up, move it down. Give it a twirl, I'll do. And Yep. 
nothing happens. <laughs> Let's try that again. Ah, that'd be why. Anyway, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Is this cheating? Wait for it. So, literally just following those few steps, you can build up a ton of moving assets that just work along with the audio, um, no code involved. Um, easy enough to build out to VR simply by dropping in a couple of prefabs. Ah, my internet's dead. <laughs> but it, it's it's really it's really as simple as using the timeline, uh, the record button, and um, moving things around. Works the waveform, and you've basically got a VR app. Any questions? In the timeline, do you have keyframes? Yeah. No, the, these are all keyframes, so you've got pretty much the same amount of control that you'd have in um, old versions of Flash. I mean, it's not like After Effects uh, levels of control, but you can, yeah, uh, edit things, move them around totally after the fact. They're baked down, you can reopen the... Uh, you can reopen the little animation clips here and edit anything you want. Yeah, I was just wondering if if you move um, the lines, basically, if you just shuffle them, so then obviously you shuffle in which order they they go up and down, and you know, in mm -hmm. animation, is that correct so far? So, yep. okay. You you can you've got a level of control over anything in the scene. Okay, can so, you can you make the mountain, you know, assemble and disassemble? Uh, by assemble and disassemble, do you mean break apart? Yeah. So to do that, you'd want to make the asset uh, as separate pieces oh, okay. and kind of split it apart after the fact. Okay, um, cool. But I can show you how to do that. Yeah, no, no, no but so, so then basically it's asset based, so whatever asset can do, you can do then. But the animation itself, is that correct? Yes. Brilliant. You can, I mean, you can do it in code, but not unless you're like a black belt in writing a shader or something like that. But yeah, it's easy, no, well, it's easy enough to kind of do that in a 3D package okay. uh, and do it after the fact anyway. Okay, and a bit of HTML understanding helps, certainly. If you it? can write HTML uh, and CSS, you can definitely get to grips with Unity. It's a different beast, but uh, it's not a million miles away. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I, uh, may, I may have this wrong, but as I understand it, Unity is now free? Or, or Completely. Uh, unless it's you're earning over 200000 a year, $200,000, then you don't need to subscribe. You have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It is. 
It is totally free and it is a really powerful. I mean, it's not just good for making video games, there are people making uh, movies in this stuff now as well. Um, there's all sorts of plugins in there. Uh, you know, the guy that made District 9, uh, what's his name? Um, Ed, he and his brother uh, run a studio called Oak Studio and they're doing a lot of pre-rendered stuff with this and the Octane renderer, I think. And you can totally do that yourself if you're earning under $200,000 a year. You can go out and all the plugins, everything's totally free. You know, you can, you can get started yourself. But do you have to, say, put a, a splash screen up? I've seen plenty of, say, on you iOS, do powered if, by Unity, for example. If, it's, uh, it's... if you're not subscribed to Unity Pro, then you do have to show the splash screen. But, I mean, it's a small price to pay for hardware, like, okay. you know, software like this, right? Yeah. Hi, how does uh, Unity compare to, like, um, some of the other proprietary um, platforms, like uh, the CryEngine and Unreal and all that kind of stuff? So... I think you can actually go out and get CryEngine. Unreal is almost on the same standing as Unity as well. One thing uh, I will say about Unity and the whole reason that I use it and I am a game developer now is because Unity is so well documented. You can go on YouTube, you can find so many tutorials out there that if, if you don't know how to do something, someone else has solved that problem. And Unreal, um, Unreal isn't a million miles away. I mean, you know, you've got blueprints, which, like I was saying with the node-based editor stuff earlier, um, it, it makes it kind of easier to get into building complex logic. But there's nothing on the market at the moment that makes it, that makes game development as accessible as Unity. So that, that's where I'd say the strength in Unity lies. It's also about to get a lot more powerful with the next update. So I would, you know, I've got a lot of love for the engine. It's, it's really simple to pick up, hard to master, but simple to pick up. Okay, I have another question. Do you think that Unity will actually push, you know, VR's technology forward as well because it is free accessible and it is, you know, easy-ish to learn. There has been a big problem in video games as a whole for a long time, right? So any other art form, let's say you want to make a movie, you can go out, you can buy a video camera, anyone can make a movie, right? You want to be a painter or you want to be an illustrator, you can pick up a pen, you can pick up a paintbrush, you can do that. And the big problem video games as an art form has had for a long time is there's been this big barrier to entry of I need to code or I need to know someone who can code. And although the stuff I've, I've tried to kind of show here and um, give an idea of is very simple, this would have been impossible five, ten years ago for the average person to pick up. And I love video games and I think it is the highest form of art. Nothing takes, nothing takes audio and visual and melds it together and makes it interactive. It is the most engaging form of media. And the problem it's had for a long time is it's just telling the same stories over and over and over. So yeah, I do think that Unity has the power to um, change video games as an art form and make virtual reality more accessible and push it along as a medium. So yes, definitely. No, welcome. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess these, these are 3D models in terms of they're in the 3D space, but can you do something to export this so you can use it on 3D glasses, for example, so you get a, you know, you get the, the, the depth perception in, in the glasses? You mean like augmented reality? Yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. Uh, so I have more AR, I guess, than VR. That's another great strength about this. So what, what I kind of fumbled to show here was uh, a quick and dirty way of making virtual reality app. The great thing about this engine is it exports to everything. 
um, Microsoft HoloLens, the new Magic Leap. Has anyone seen the Magic Leap? Yeah. This this thing is going to change everything, you know. Um, yeah, it, it can export to augmented reality and with a bit of fiddling you'll be able... I mean, there, there's already a Hello World tutorial up on YouTube on how to make an AR uh, app in 10 minutes in Unity, you know. Again, very little coding experience required. Okay, so, so th things like AR kit and, and, and whatever it, you could you could work with both of these. Yeah, there's always making it, uh, the hardest thing about doing this stuff if you're not an experienced programmer is doing the interaction bits. So um, it again, simple to pick up, hard to master. But yes, you can totally export it to all that kind of stuff. Yeah? No worries. One more question. Hi. Um, is it easy to to get access to the timeline objects and you know f do whatever I want with it? The uh, whatever you want in in the timeline. Yeah, like audio, and then say take the amplitude and yeah, phase yeah. In there, and stuff. I mean, there, there's a set of values exposed um, on an object. And the timeline will look at those values. If you want to do more stuff to an object, there's a few lines of code you can write and place a script on that object and expose those values to. Unless you've got uh, an animation clip or something like that placed on the object, then I guess there's not a hell of a lot more you'd want to do other than the stuff that you'd already get from just dropping it onto the timeline. Um, but if you want to uh, know more about that stuff, come find me in a second. I'd be more than happy to talk at length about Thank you. Unity stuff. It's fine. I was just going to ask about what device is, and do you have an example of this at all that we can look at? Or? Uh, so I usually build to um, desktop stuff like Rift and Vive, uh, but I've got a Gear VR. Uh, with me here if anyone would like to look at the final scene in an actual VR headset instead of just on a flat screen um, Give me a shout. Uh, there's a headset right here, and I'd be more than happy to show you guys Yeah Cool if anyone has any more questions uh, about VR stuff, please uh, give me a shout um, On my email address I'm uh, conducting a game jam in August uh, that's just VR, AR-led. Um, it's purely for people that... Um, I, experienced programmers welcome, but if you'd like to try your hand at building video games from Friday to a Sunday, um, it'll be free to attend, and I'll have lots of cool toys there, and you're all more than welcome to come down and have a go at making video games.